morning, Your Honor. Sue Upper, Leslie Basie, and Zach Wichow all appearing for the state of Wisconsin. All right, sir, please state your name for the record. Uh, I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing as authorized representative for my client. I accept for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments. All right, the record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl E. Brooks appears in person and in custody. He is in uh, street clothing today in a suit and tie, also wearing a mask. All right, while Madam Clerk is copying uh, those subpoenas, I do want to address uh, Exhibit 6, which was previously received by the court. Uh, this is the uh, six-minute squad cam and audio footage after I went back into chambers to review that um, I did uh, note what Mr. Brooks had said um, I may have been a little bit off on the language in terms of what Ms. Patterson is heard saying but it's a pretty clear reference to uh, one of the incidents that is the subject of uh, a prohibition by this court related to other acts. At about the 2.52 mark in the recording, I heard Miss Patterson say, me and my baby daddy, we fight all the time. We had an incident, he ran me over with a car. That's what I heard her to say. She does not say it happened in Milwaukee. She does not say it happened three weeks ago. She does not say I suffered a broken leg. To me, in the context of Ms. Uh, Kunkel's testimony, excuse me, Runkel's testimony last week, in which she testified that Mr. Brooks had swerved at her, swerved at Erica Patterson, and that Ms. Runkel had pulled her out of the way, I don't think the jury would have um, realized or appreciated she was talking about another incident. So I think the, uh, the exhibit can stand as is. We could redact just, uh, you know, about a two or three second um, audio mm -hmm. from that recording where those words are removed. And I listened to it several times over the weekend. I think if we did that, it would not be that obvious so that the uh, exhibit could stand in place. Uh, it's, it's obvious to me. Um... I only really had, I can only hear out of one ear and I was able to hear clearly what was said. Um, with all due respect, Your Honor, you made a ruling about this previously in ample enough time before the trial even started, you made the ruling. I see no reason why the exhibit should be admitted into evidence. Um, from my perspective, it's clearly obvious what was being referenced. I mean, if she was able to give any type of statement at that time to the officer, then obviously she wasn't hit at that time on, a, on, on that date on the 21st. She would clearly be referencing some other incident. Hence the reason why we argue all the time in this, that, and the third. Uh, it was clear to me what was being referenced. And because of the ruling, because of uh, the implication in that statement, I believe the exhibit should be striked altogether. Your position has been made clear. You believe it should be uh, struck um, or stricken, as we say. And I agree with you, Mr. Brooks. This court gave a very clear uh, prior ruling related to other acts, and the state had an obligation to abide by that ruling. Even though I could redact, um, I am going to strike this exhibit and so advise the jury. I simply want to tell them the following when they uh, come into court today. As previously, the court received exhibit six during the testimony of Officer Phillips. Uh, the jury is hereby advised that the court has stricken this exhibit um, and the jury is to disregard uh, anything it may have heard regarding what was on that exhibit. Any objection to that language from the state? No. How about from you, Mr. Brooks? No. I also want to uh, state for the record that I, um, 
was given a uh, paperwork to fill out a report of my own. Uh, and I stressed that because um, after the detectives came and took the pictures of my bruises and injuries, I was told that they didn't know when I would actually get the actual filing of the report that, that they were gonna report. So I just went ahead and asked for my own. I filled that out. I don't know if it, it's been given to the right parties yet. You're talking about the uh, inmate complaint form to have the uh, either the jail or the sheriff's department review that related to the use of force. Yeah, it was. Um, it was the the top paper was from uh, the sheriff. Um, All right, you know that that's not my responsibility to address what happened, other than how it impacts this trial, which is why I wanted to have a record. If there's anything you believe should be in the record from you regarding that, then you should uh, turn that in. Uh, very briefly. Um, I just want to state this for the record that um, I would like to issue the, the court an apology for me um, in regards to my actions last week during the trial. Um, I just want the court to understand it's, it's, it's very emotional uh, right now, not, not only for just the whole situation of the trial. Uh, the families here that have to go through, you know, everything that's going to be involved with the trial, but also my family as well and myself is is very very emotional, and but not to excuse my actions, I should uh, carry myself uh, with with uh, better respect than that. I wasn't raised that way, and um, I owe you, Your Honor, and the court an apology, and, and I'm going to stand up as a man and and, and tell. The whole court and you, Your Honor, that I apologize to the bailiffs, that I apologize for my actions. Um, like I said, that's not how I was raised. I come from a Christian background. My mother did not raise me that way. She did not raise me, you know, to act out uh, out of frustration and irritation and, and, and anger. And I just wanted everybody to know that I apologize for my actions. And um, I'm going to try my best to um, whatever happens to conduct myself um, with respect and with respect to the court. And I just wanted y'all to know that the prosecution, judge, bailiffs, uh, clerks, reporters, everybody, the audience, everybody here, I just wanted y'all to know that. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. I do appreciate that. Um, Understandably so, this is an emotional experience, I think, for everyone involved. Do you remember what you can recall? Do I remember if I can recall? Do you remember the disturbance you recall? Yes, I do. Uh, would you state what that is? What, well, what that was, rather? Uh, I heard a horn beeping. And then a Ford Escape came through the um, parade route and you drove past me and wouldn't stop and you continued driving into the parade route. Who is you? Uh, Daryl Brooks, the defendant, seated at the table. Um, let the record reflect that I do not identify by that name nor do I know anybody by that name. Your objection is noted. So, you heard a horn beeping. Yes. Um, you stated that you've been in law enforcement for 25 years. That's a long time. Um, so it would be fair to say that you uh, operate a motor vehicle uh, pretty much every day. Would that be fair to say? Yes, I operate a motor vehicle almost every day. And... Um, would it be also fair to say that um, you would only beep your horn in a motor vehicle if you were trying to alert someone to your presence? Uh, I think that could be a fair statement. Would it be also fair that you would beep your horn to avoid any danger? 
There could be many reasons why a person is beeping their horn. Do you recall how fast the vehicle was going at the time you attempted to stop it? I believe the vehicle was going about three to five miles an hour when I tried to stop the vehicle and it continued on past me. Would it be fair to say that uh, three to five miles an hour is not very fast? I think it's very fast when you're in a parade route when there's hundreds of people marching in the road and a police officer is in standing in front of your car pounding on the hood trying to get the vehicle to stop. I'd say that that's too fast. Any speed is too fast on a parade route when you have all those people in the roadway. A car should not have been there. Um, that wasn't the question, but thanks for the commentary. <laughs> Do you recall saying that the operator of the vehicle you attempted to stop had short hair and a short dark beard? I'm not sure what the context is, but I don't recall saying that the person had short hair. The, the context was uh, the question of, did you get a description of the driver of the vehicle you attempted to stop? I guess I'm not sure when you're speaking of because was that when I saw the car or when we saw the vehicle after what witnesses said? It seems like it's, I'm not sure exactly the time period that so you're are we talking about what witnesses said or what you actually saw? Correct, that's what I'm confused about. Well, you just said that you recall being asked a description of the operator of the motor vehicle. Would that be fair to say? I don't understand your question. Uh, I think it's very clear. You testified at the preliminary hearing in this matter, correct? So I believe my testimony was at the preliminary hearing that I did not see the person's hair if that's the specific time that you're speaking of. I have a portion of that preliminary hearing that you testified at with your words right here. Mr. Brooks, what page are you at? I am at page 17. All right, thank you. You were asked, could you see anybody inside the vehicle? Your answer was, um, at that point, um, I could not see the person real clearly, but as the vehicle continued pushing through me, I was paused. My position changed to the side of the vehicle where I was directly outside the driver's side window. And I could see inside of the window and I could see the driver very clearly. Would that be fair to say that those are your statements? Yes, sir. So could you or could you not see the driver clearly? Your question is if I could see him clearly, yes, I could see him clearly. So why would you state that you couldn't see him clearly when asked the question? I think you're asking about his hair. I'm so no, I asked going about back his hair before. Between... This is a different question. Okay, I asked you ask, about that. Could you ask your question again, please? You just stated that you could see the driver clearly, correct? Correct. But you also said that you couldn't see the driver clearly, correct? Objection, that's a mistake. Grounds. So, Mr. Brooks, I think it comes down to a little bit of context. I'm going to sustain the objection. And then if you would please rephrase. I think it comes down to at what point in time in the contact with the SUV are you referring? At any time, could you see the driver clearly? at any time during your attempt to, attempt to stop the vehicle? Yes, at any time I could see the person clearly that was driving. The entire time you attempted to stop it, you can clearly see the driver of the vehicle? Well, at one time you asked any time, and then you asked the entire time. Did you see if anyone else was, could, could you see rather, if anyone else was in the vehicle? I did not see anybody else in the vehicle when it passed my location. Do you recall there 
being any tinted windows to the vehicle you attempted to stop? Uh, I do not recall the passenger front or the passenger rear being tinted. It's, I believe that the rear windows on the SUV were tinted. So it would be fair to say you, you can recall every window that was tinted on the vehicle that you attempted to stop. Questions been asked and answered, Your Honor. His answer should stand. Hold on, Mr. Brooks. Um, the objection is sustained. Next question. Captain, answer. Uh, Detective Casey, are you a party to this case in any way? I don't understand the question. Are you a party to this case? I don't understand the question. Have you filed a claim in regards to this case? I have not. Have you read the complaint in this case? I've read the complaint. Do you recall who the complaint was brought by? The complaint is brought by the state of Wisconsin, represented by the Waukesha County District Attorney's Office, District Attorney Sue Opper. So the state of Wisconsin then will, would be the plaintiff in this matter then, correct? That is correct, the state of Wisconsin. Do you see the state of Wisconsin president in the courtroom right now? Yes, I do. They are represented at the prosecution table by District Attorney Sue Opper, Deputy District Attorney Leslie Basie, and Assistant District Attorney Zach Wichell. You said represented? Yes, sir. Do you see the plaintiff? The plaintiff is an entity. They are represented by the District Attorney's Office. So the plaintiff is an entity? Correct. To the best of your knowledge, is the entity a human being? An entity is an entity. It is not a human being. To the best of your knowledge, being in law enforcement for as long as you have, would it be fair to say that an entity, which is not a human being, living person, can bring a claim against anyone? I believe they... Object, Your Honor, to the grounds, relevance. Grounds. Well, I'll let her get her objection out, okay? I mean, I've tried to be patient, but these questions really have no bearing on this. The objection is sustained on relevance grounds. Next question. Have you ever had any interaction with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. How long have you known the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Let her get her objection out, Mr. Brooks. It's sustained on relevance grounds. Well, I do respect, Your Honor. I, I think that those are valid questions to the matter. Mr. Brooks, they've been sustained. Next question. You did hear the vehicle that you attempt to stop blow numerous times. Blow its horn. Numerous. Yes, I heard the horn blowing as it was approaching my position. I want to refer you again to page 15. Um, it is from your testimony at the preliminary hearing. Well, Your Honor, that's improper because Detective Casey does not have the testimony transcript in front of him. The district Rounds. attorney is correct. This, this witness does not have the transcript in front of him. So he, would that render him unable to recall what he testified to? I don't know. You have to ask him that. <laughs> That's what I was attempting to do, Your Honor. I apologize. So just so I'm clear, am I allowed to read from this or no? Just ask your question, Mr. Brooks. From the best of your knowledge, do you recall stating in your testimony at the preliminary hearing that it was in fact the vehicle you attempted to stop that was blaring his horn? Objection. That's not what Grounds. the transcript says. Grounds. And it's been asked and answered. <clears throat> um, sustained. 
I'd like uh, permission to put up Exhibit 120 again, Your Honor. It's already been admitted and published. You've been asked here today several questions from Mr. Brooks about uh, what you saw as the vehicle passed you. Is that correct? Objection. I do not consent to being called that name, and I do not know the person that you refer to. Objection is noted. It's overruled. Yes. Do you know where on the parade route the vehicle was located when this screenshot was captured? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Yes, I do. So about how far was it from where you saw the red SUV with Mr. Brooks driving to where this photo was, where this video was taken and this is a screenshot from that video, correct? Objection. I do not consent to being called that name and I do not know the individual by who you refer to. Your objection is noted. May I answer the question? I would say that it's approximately two tenths of a mile for me, a very short distance. Okay. Was the appearance virtually the same from when you saw it to when this screenshot was captured? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Yes, it was. Are you able to see the driver of the vehicle in this screenshot, sir? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Yes, I am. You told us on uh, direct examination on Friday you were able to pound on the hood, correct? correct. Were you directly in front of the vehicle at that point? Objection. Um, it was also, he also said in uh, his testimony on Friday that he could identify the clothing. He specifically said what the color Mr. of the Rocher clothing was. Mr. to testify. That's not a proper objection. As to the specific objection, um, it's overruled, and uh, Attorney Opper may complete her question. Where were you positioned when you were pounding on the hood of the SUV? Objection. Overruled. Did you have to step out of the way to avoid being struck? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Uh, the vehicle came in contact with me. As it was pushing through me, I shuffled my feet to the side, and then I continued down the side of the vehicle where I came directly in view with the driver's side window. Okay. So you would have been... What was the driver doing as it passed you? Objection. Irrelevant. As he passed you, I should say. Overruled. Objection. I do not. Mr. Consent Brooks, to overruled. being called he. Uh, initially, he was staring straight ahead, and as I was pounding on the driver's side window, he turned and looked directly at my face. Okay. Did the driver uh, make any effort to pull over or pull off the parade route at that spot? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Uh, I initially chased after the vehicle, trying to get it to stop. Um, I could see the vehicle driving until it crossed Barstow where it first made contact with people. The vehicle sped up and I never saw it slow down or stop until I lost view of it as it crossed Barstow Street. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Would you say you got a good look at the driver's face? I would say yes, I got a relatively good look at the driver's face. Okay. Did the car go right past you, sir? The vehicle did not stop. Did you see what the driver was doing as he went past you? The driver appeared to be emotionless and was looking straight ahead, clearly ignoring anything that was to the sides of the vehicle. I had raised my left hand and was telling the vehicle to stop and the vehicle was ignoring what I was doing. Um, Officer Butrin, are you able to estimate the speed of the vehicle as it went past you? Objection. Hearsay. Um, overruled. He may answer. Based on my training experience, I estimated the vehicle be traveling at approximately 25 miles an hour at that time. This is uh, the area where you tried to stop the SUV. This, this is before Barstow, correct? Yes, it is. Did you continue to watch the vehicles that went past you? Overruled. I had watched the vehicle and I began to chase after it. Were you saying anything at that time? Irrelevant. Overruled. At that point, at the vehicle, after the vehicle had passed me, I was not saying anything. I just began chasing it. Okay. And you were running after it? Yes. Were you able to catch it? I was not. At any point, did you see the vehicle just pull over to the side of the road and stop? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. 
from the time that I could visually observe the vehicle, I did not see it stop or pull to the side of the road. After you saw the SUV strike other human beings, did you see the driver stop, pull over, and check on those persons? Objection, irrelevant. Overruled. No, I did not. The vehicle continued. Was the uh, driver of the SUV still honking the horn? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. From the distance that the vehicle had traveled away from me, I could not at that time hear what the vehicle was doing. Okay. Okay, you can stop. For the record, uh, about three seconds of the clip was played. Move to admit and permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection. Um, we haven't seen the entire video yet. We, how do we know what's in the video? The proper foundation has been laid. The objections noted. Uh, exhibit 16 is received. Permission to publish is granted. We saw you sprinting after the vehicle, correct, on foot? Yes. Okay. I'd like to show you another uh, exhibit. Do you happen to know uh, how this video was recorded? Objection. Oh, from relevant. what camera? You're right, it's a vague question. From what camera this video was recorded? Objection. Relevant. Overruled. This was recorded from the City of Washington Police Department uh, squad camera. For your squad car? For the square card that was operating that night, yes. Okay. Uh, move to admit number 17 and permission to publish. Objection. Um, actually, it's four seconds that was played, and I still don't, we still aren't clear of the relevancy of this video. Your objections are noted. The foundation has been laid. It's relevant. Can you circle yourself in the uh, video? All right, and next to you, it looks like there's a person in uh, a yellow vest that reads police. Is that correct? Objection. Uh, we're referring to the officer giving testimony, not the officer that's present with them. Overruled. Yes, that is correct. Who is that officer? That'll be Officer Schneider. And uh, what's the crossroad here again, if you could just remind us? Objection. The, we'll start on the south side of the street. The objections noted, it's overruled. He may answer. On the south side of the street where the squad is parked, that it's going to be Northeast Avenue. All right, we're going to go ahead and play this in its duration. There you go. Correct. Is that the area where you encountered uh, Mr. Brooks in the SUV? Objection. I do not identify by that name, nor do I consent to it. Your objection's noted, it's overruled. That is where I had initially placed my hand out in front of me and advising the vehicle to stop. Okay. Again, as you uh, previously testified, the SUV had not stopped anywhere along that route, correct? Objection, I already asked this question, and it was answered already. It's foundational, Your Honor. Overruled. Correct, I never observed the vehicle stop at any point that I was making my way down the route. As you were running down the route, did you encounter people who had been struck and injured? Objection. Already asked question. Overruled. Yes, I did. Some point uh, much later in the night, do you remember where the vehicle was parked? Objection. Irrelevant. Overruled. I do not recall the address in which it was parked, but I do know the position of where the vehicle was parked, yes. Could you just briefly describe how the vehicle was parked? Objection. Irrelevant. Overruled. The vehicle was backed into a driveway. Near the residence on Maple Street? Yes. Do you remember uh, finding a hat at that location? Objection, irrelevant. Overruled. Yes, I do. I'm going to ask for uh, Exhibit 92 to be previewed for the witness, please. Do you believe this picture is a true and accurate representation of the hat that you observed in the backyard? Yes, I do. Move to admit 92 on permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection hearsay. How, how can we know for sure that that hat wasn't by somebody that lives in the building? Mr. Brooks, you can't testify. You're attempting to do that. I'll instruct you not to. Um, your objection is overruled. You remember seeing that hat in the backyard area, sir? Yes, I do. Okay. There was one male that came out that had taken a picture and asked the rest of the residents at that location if it was any of theirs. And did it belong to anyone at the residence? They indicated that it did not. 
I asked you uh, about that um, side road um, on the north side of the street, north side of Main Street, Buckley Street, correct? That is correct. Were there any barricades at that location, sir? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Yes, there were, if I remember correctly, I believe there were three barricades. <laughs> if uh, Mr. Brooks had wanted to leave the parade route, would he have been able to get out at that location? Objection. I do not consent to that, that name, or nor do I know any <laughs> individual by that name. Your objection's noted. He may answer the question. Yes, it would have been a reasonable exit point. Would, would there have been anything other than those plastic barricades that would have blocked his exit from the parade at that spot? Objection, hearsay. It's not hearsay, it's overruled. He may answer. No, the only thing that would have been struck was the plastic barricade. Okay. You heard the vehicle that was approaching honking his horn multiple times, is that correct? Yes. To the best of your knowledge, what would be a reason that someone operating a motor vehicle will honk their horn? Objection, speculation. Overruled, you may answer. There are multiple reasons why a vehicle would do that. <coughs> Can you give any specific reason? To alert people or vehicles in the area that there's a vehicle coming. Did you notice any tinting to any of the uh, windows on the vehicle? No. So you were able to see inside of the vehicle pretty clearly? Yes. You stated that the operator of the vehicle was wearing a hat. Would that be fair to say? The operator of the vehicle appeared to be wearing a hat or have their hood up. If you got a clear description of the operator of the vehicle, wouldn't you know if it was a hat or a hood? Objection, argumentative. Grounds. Sustained. Were you able to hear the vehicle honking before it approached you or when it came upon you? I was able to hear the vehicle honking before it approached me. Did you hear the vehicle honk after it had passed you or came in contact with you? No, I did not. Would it be fair to say that the video that was shown, you can clearly hear the vehicle honking? No. Can we play the video again for the witness? Pause right there. Would it be fair to say that that was not just a horn that was heard honking after the vehicle was past you? I did not hear a horn, no. We'll wind it back. It was about 39 seconds. We're now going back to about the 30 second mark. Objection. There isn't 39 seconds in the video. It stops at 37, so how could it be 39? I'm sorry. You're absolutely right, sir. 29. I thought you said 39. I can hear I can hear a horn. Sir, you can't testify. So you can ask a question of this witness. We'll watch it again. When? But at let some point, you, you can't argue with it. Let him. me ask this question. When did you observe or hear the vehicle honking? At which part in this video? At no point in this video do I hear the horn honking. To the best of your knowledge, a honking horn from a vehicle would indicate trying to alert people to his presence, correct? There are several reasons why a vehicle would honk the horn. Would you honk your vehicle to alert people to your presence? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds. It's not relevant, sustain. You said it would be multiple reasons that a vehicle will honk its horn. Would it be fair to say that one of those reasons would be to alert? Objection has been answered. Uh, Officer Butcher, and I see you in the uniform today. Would you? Would it be fair to ask that you would be on duty right now if not called to testify? 
Hold on, uh, Mr. Brooks, before we move on to the next topic, you had asked it to be paused. I trust you don't want anything further from this video published to the jury at this time. Not at it this time. All right, Madam Clerk may take it down. My apologies for the interruption. Um, oh, it's okay. Go ahead, ask your question again. Um, would it be fair to say that if you weren't um, here to testify this morning, you would be on duty? No, I would not be. So this would be an off day? I am currently on vacation, yes. Do you normally wear your uniform on vacation? Objection, argumentative. Grounds. He may answer. Only if I have something related to police activity or duty. Do you feel that, do you feel that it was necessary to wear your uniform in court today? Grounds. Sustained. Next question. Are you a party to this matter in any way? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. S sustained. It's not relevant. Do you have a claim in this matter? Objection. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Have you read the complaint in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrele not relevant. Sustained. Do you know who the plaintiff is in this matter? Objection irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Can you testify on who called you to testify? Who subpoenaed you to testify here this morning? I believe it was the state of Wisconsin. So the state of Wisconsin would be the plaintiff in this matter, to your knowledge? Objection, Your Grounds. Honor. This question is irrelevant. Sustained. It's not relevant, sir. Sustained. Next I'll question. I think relevant. Who called him to testify? You already answered. So, you've had interactions with the state of Wisconsin? Objection. Grounds. Relevant and vague. Grounds. Sustained. Can you testify if the state of Wisconsin is a living human being or an entity? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Sustained. So, you in fact don't have a claim in this matter, correct? Objection irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. You are aware that all police departments are funded by the state of Wisconsin, are you not? Objection irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds. Sustained. If that's an inaccurate statement, then who pays you? Objection to Grounds. relevance. Overruled, he may ask, he may answer, I assume you mean who pays him his salary. Correct. You may answer. Be the city of Waukesha. Is the city of Waukesha in the state of Wisconsin? Yes. Is the city of Waukesha the plaintiff in this case? No. <clears throat> have you ever, how long have you known the plaintiff in this case? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Next question. So to the best of your knowledge, you've never even had any interaction with the plaintiff in this matter. Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Sustained. Mr. Brooks under 90611, if you can you need to move on to a new topic of cross exam, otherwise I will declare the cross exam opportunity closed. At any time when the vehicle passed you, did you hear the vehicle honk? Objection. Asked and answered. Sustained. Is it fair to say that in the video clip that we were just shown, no one was struck? Correct. Would it also be fair to say that in the video we just saw, no one, the vehicle did not attempt to strike anyone? Objection. Speculation. Grounds. Grounds. Sustained calls for speculation on the part of the vehicle operator. We can clearly see in the video that no one was attempted to be struck. How is that not relevant? Um, the jury will disregard the last statement made by Mr. Brooks as he may not testify at this point in time. Next question, please. And just for the record, I don't consent to being called that name, Your Honor. Next question, please. And to the best of your knowledge, uh, no one was struck 
before the vehicle approached your presence. Objection. Grounds. Asked and answered. Grounds. Asked and answered. Sustained. Next question. I didn't answer the question. The witness did. And for the record, you have no foul claim in this matter whatsoever. Objection. Irrelevant. Sustained. At any point, were you able to hear the horn honking in that video, sir? No, I was not. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. All right, thank you. You may step down. We still have yet to address the subject matter jurisdiction. Would that be addressed at some point? Mr. Brooks, that's a frivolous matter. We've already addressed that. Is that a judicial determination, Your Honor, that you want to address the subject matter jurisdiction? The record stands, Mr. Brooks. Would a verified statement of particulars by affidavit be addressed, Your Honor? All right. Is that a target agreement, Your Honor? I heard radio traffic about a vehicle going through the barricades or past the barricades. What action, if any, did you take? I was standing next to Officer Buttrin. He began to move forward, and as I observed the red SUV coming towards Officer Buttrin and not stopping, I ran forward to also try to intercept the vehicle. At some point, you needed to step out of the way so you yourself were not struck. Is that fair to say? Objection. Being the witness. Sustained. Please rephrase. As you stood in the middle of the road facing the vehicle, did you stay in that position? I did not. I was very concerned the car was going to hit me. So what did you do? I jumped out of the way. Were you able to see the driver of the car? I was. Did the driver of the SUV react to your presence in any way? He had no expression on his face, and he was looking straight ahead as if he was looking straight through me. Did the driver of the SUV follow your direction and leave the parade route at Buckley? No, he did not. As a matter of fact, he appeared to speed up. Are you able to estimate speeds at this location? Objection. You're saying? I would estimate the speed to be anywhere from 30 to 40 miles per hour. Officer Schneider, did you hear the vehicle honking its horn at all? I never heard any honking. So for the record, we've shown about the first two or three seconds of that clip to Officer Schneider. Officer Schneider, is Exhibit 18 a true and accurate representation of your actions involving the red SUV on 1121 of 21? It is. Move to admit and permission to publish 18. Any position, Mr. Brooks? Objection. What's the relevancy of the video? The objection is noted. It's overruled. Okay. And please clear the screen. All right, we're going to play this video in its entirety now. Oh, my God! What the? When you heard the screaming and heard of the report of problems to your west, what did you do? Objection. Overruled. I was stopped by numerous people who said that their children had potentially been nicked. The worst one was an adolescent female that was laying in the road with her family around her. Do you know the first name of that adolescent female? Jessica Lee. Overruled. I'm sorry, your answer may have been blocked by Mr. Brooks' objections. Please repeat it. Objection. I do not consent to that name, nor am I that person. Noted. You may answer. Jessica Lynn. I walked towards the direction of Mountaintop Coffee, and I was directed to stand guard over one of the deceased. Who was it that you were standing guard over? Overruled. I never inquired the true name of the individual I ended up being by. 
could you tell which group or unit in the parade that deceased person was associated with? Overruled. She was one of the dancing grannies. Um, Officer Schneider. Um, it would be fair to say from the video footage that was shown that you were standing directly next to Officer Butchern. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, for any reason, would you have, being that you were so close next to him, not heard the same things that he heard? Objection, I think that calls for speculation. Grounds, grounds. Uh, calls for speculation. Do you recall if the driver had hair? I do. Do you recall if the driver ha was wearing a hat? I don't recall that. Do you recall seeing anyone in the back seat? I couldn't see the back seat from my position. Why could you not see the back seat? Because there's front seats in the way. Would it be fair to say from the video that there was a, a barricade set up at uh, the cross street of Buckley? Yes. Would it be also fair to say that you couldn't turn down Buckley Street because of the barricade? The street was barricaded. Could you make a turn down the street that was barricaded? You could make a turn, but it was barricaded. How can you make a turn on a barricaded street? How would you be able to do that? If a vehicle were to slow down, the barricade could be moved. So a vehicle would actually have to stop and then make the turn. That's correct. Uh, can we show uh, exit 17 again? Or exhibit, sorry, excuse me, exhibit 17. Well, before you play it, can you pause it? Before you play it, would it be fair to say that at that intersection that has uh, the red light facing towards the camera, that there is in fact, someone who appears to be law enforcement standing right there. Objection vague. Sustained. Can you Rephrase. Would it be fair to say that someone standing at that intersection that appears to be wearing the same police vest attire that you are wearing? Objection vague. I Grounds. What he was asking is clear enough, so he may answer. There is an individual on the Buckley side of the intersection wearing a high-res traffic vest. Can you play it just for just a couple of seconds so we can get a clear look at the individual that I'm referring to? Exactly how many seconds, Mr. Brooks? Um, I don't consent to being called that name, but two, maybe two or three seconds. <laughs> Can pause at the three second mark, Your Honor. Can you go back a second? Judge, it's not possible to jump back in one second, one second increments. We go back to, to the beginning. beginning. Right there. Do you know that individual right there? I don't recall who that was, no. Did you see them in? at any time attempt to stop the vehicle or redirect the vehicle? I did not observe that myself, no. You can take the exhibit down. Can you put up exhibit 18? I want it to play, Your Honor, if okay. I may. Per the whole thing? Yes, ma'am. All right, permission granted. Oh, my God! Pause it right there. Would it be fair to say that that was just a horn that was heard? No, I don't hear a horn. You don't hear a horn? I do not hear a horn. Can we start that from the beginning? Sure. For the record, Mr. Brooks. When did, when did objection, the objection. I do not consent to being called that name, Your Honor, nor do I identify by that name. The defendant has asked the video to be stopped. It was stopped at four seconds in. He's requested that it be replayed. Oh my God! 
Pause it. Would it be fair to say that that was not just a horn that was heard on this video? I will stick with my original answer on that. So your original answer would be that you did not just hear a horn on this video that was being played? That's correct. So would it be any reason that anyone else would have heard a horn? Objection, speculation. Sustained calls for speculation on the part of this witness. Did you at any time um, get a chance to read the report by Officer Butcher who was standing right next to you during this event? I did not read his report. Did you have any conversation with him about what he may have observed or heard that evening? Can you clarify what you mean? Did you have any conversation with Officer Butcher about what he may have observed or heard on that evening? Later, after uh, everything had calmed down, we, we had talked for a little bit. Did he state to you that he had heard a horn beeping at any time during your conversation? Objection here saying we've destroyed Grounds. the question. Grounds. Oh. Sustained. Calls for hearsay. Do you recall what the conversation was about when you talked that evening? I can't recall specifics, no. Did you in any way talk about what had happened that evening at the parade? Yeah, it would be about the parade, but I can't, again, tell you specifics of what we talked about. You don't recall? I've already answered that. But you're sure that you had some talks about what you may have seen? Objection. Repetitive. Rounds. Asked an answer. From your recollection, would it be fair to say that Officer Butcherin saw the approaching vehicle before you did? Objection. Grounds. Speculation. Grounds. Sustained. It calls for speculation. I'm a part of this witness. Next question. At what point did you see the vehicle? Once it was past Officer Butcherin or before it had passed him? I saw the vehicle coming from the White Rock uh, location, so it was before the vehicle had even approached Officer Butron's location. Any reason why uh, you didn't move to attempt to stop the vehicle when Officer Butron did? Yes, uh, we oftentimes in our line of work have uh, people, meaning no ill will, uh, just disregard police barricades and other things. So initially, I didn't know if the vehicle was being driven by somebody that was just simply distracted or lost or senile. I had no idea. So it would be fair to say that at the time you had uh, no idea what was going on with the vehicle and why it was there. At the time, what I knew was that someone had radioed that a car had disregarded our barricades to keep the parade route closed off. Did you hear a car or did you hear an SUV? I don't recall the exact words that were used. It was a vehicle. Would it be fair to say that you just said that you heard a car over the radio? I don't recall the exact words. Would it be fair to say that it is extremely hard to compare a car with an SUV. Objection, argumentative. Grounds. Sustained. <coughs> Next question. Would you ever mistake a car in an SUV? Objection, argumentative. Grounds. Overruled, she may answer. I think I'm pretty good at knowing the difference. So when you heard the radio call, were you expecting a car or SUV? I was expecting a vehicle, red in color, to be coming my direction. Would it be fair to say that you before didn't state the color of the vehicle that you were expecting? I think the question's vague, Your Honor. Objection. As to Grounds. 
when she may Rounds. or may not. Mr. Brooks, hold on. Let her state the objection. Questions vague as to when she may or may not have indicated the color of the car, Your Honor. Grounds. Uh, I'll sustain the objection. Please rephrase. It's, it's sustained as to the form of the question. At any time during the radio um, report, was there any report of the color of the vehicle, as you say, in the report that you heard over the radio? The exact color of the vehicle over the radio, I do not recall hearing. I know that I saw a red SUV coming from White Rock. Would it be fair to say that you heard the radio call before you saw the vehicle? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I heard it before I saw it. So would it be fair to say that you couldn't have known what the color of the vehicle would be and what vehicle was being referred to? There was only one vehicle on the parade route um, from what I saw. Um, Were you injured in any way by the vehicle? I was not injured. So it would be fair to say that you haven't filed a claim in this matter, correct? Objection irrelevant. Grounds. I'm overruled. She may answer. I have not filed a claim for this. So it would be also fair to state that you are not an injured party in this matter, correct? Objection asked and answered. Grounds. Um, sustained. <clears throat> Could you state for the record who subpoenaed you to testify in this matter today? The state. And when you say the state, uh, who are you referring to exactly? The state of Wisconsin. To the best of your knowledge, being in law enforcement for some time, Have you ever had any interaction with the state whatsoever? Objection, Grounds. irrelevant, vague. Grounds. Sustained. Did you physically talk to the state about testifying here this morning? Objection. Grounds. Vague and irrelevant. Grounds. Do you mean to ask her if she spoke with the DA's office? Did she speak to the plaintiff? Sustained. Next question. How long have you known the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Next question. Have you read the complaint in this matter? I believe I've skimmed it over. I haven't read it in its entirety. Would it be any reason why you didn't read the complaint in its entirety? Objection. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Did you have any idea that you may be called to testify in this matter? Um, I, I did see it as a possibility, yes. So it would be fair to say that if you knew that it was a possibility that you may be called to testify, would it be fair to say that it would be best to acquire all the knowledge that you can acquire before testifying? Objection, argumentative. Rounds. Sustained. Are you aware that all police departments are funded by the state of Wisconsin? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. If you weren't testifying here this morning, would you be on duty? Yes, I would be. Is that why you came in uniform? Yes, it is. So it'd be fair to say that right now you're on the clock? Yes, I am. Being paid by whom? By the city of Waukesha. Is the city of Waukesha in the state of Wisconsin? Yes, it is. Who funds the Waukesha Police Department? Objection. Your Grounds. Right. Sustained. During your attempt to stop the vehicle, do you recall the vehicle trying to strike anyone? 
I did not see the vehicle deviating in any way, no. By you saying that you didn't see the vehicle deviate, can you clear, clarify for the record what that means, in your opinion? When I saw the vehicle coming towards my direction, it was driving in a straight line. So, would it be fair to say that that does not clarify what you mean by deviate? Objection. That's argumentative, sustained. As far as you recall, you didn't see or hear that the vehicle has struck anyone. Would that be and fair to say? That's been asked and answered, Your Honor. Grounds? Sustained. Do you know of any attempts to stop the vehicle before the vehicle approached your area? Based on the radio traffic, I heard um, it sounded like uh, officers had attempted at that time, but I didn't see it, so I couldn't say for certain. So it would be fair to say that you don't recall? Objection. That's Grounds. not fair to say, Your Honor. It's Grounds. a misstatement of her testimony. Grounds. Sustain it mischaracterizes the testimony. So to the best of your knowledge, um, Officer Butchering was the first person that you observed attempting to stop the vehicle. That's correct. And then yourself. That is correct. With no injuries. Can you clarify, please? You, Officer Butchering, or you were not injured in your attempt to stop the vehicle? I believe that's correct. You believe that was correct? I don't recall Butrin complaining of any injuries, so I couldn't say for certain. Were you yourself injured? I have already answered that. You stated that you uh, skimmed through the complaint uh, for this matter. Would that be fair to say? Objection asked and answered. We need to move on to a new topic, Your Honor. Grounds. Sustained, it's been asked and answered. We need a new topic, what? Mr. Brooks, under 90611. I'm directing you to move on. I'm just trying to find out what would be the reason not to read the whole complaint. That's all. Completely irrelevant, Your Honor. So, uh, so, grounds. There's no question. On cross examination, you told Mr. Brooks that you saw the driver of the vehicle quite clearly. Do you remember that? Objection. I do not consent to being called that name, and I would respectfully ask to be identified with an unknown <laughs> individual. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. Go ahead, Attorney Do you see the driver of the red SUV in the courtroom here today, Officer Schneider? Objection. I do. Hearsay. Overruled. She may answer. I'd ask Mr. Brooks be directed to remove his mask so that Officer Schneider can identify him, please. Objection. I never heard an uh, answer to the question. It has not been answered, Mr. Brooks. Uh, please remove your mask. Thank you. Officer Schneider, is the driver of the red SUV that you've just described for this jury present in this courtroom today? Objection. Yes. You're saying. Can you please point him out by where he's seated and what he's wearing? He is seated over here at the table wearing a gray suit. That's the man you saw driving the red SUV as it sped past you? Yes, it is. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. On the issue of identification only, do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, I do. Um, you did state that you saw the driver of the vehicle and it had the driver had hair and you stated brown eyes and brown hair, correct? That is what I said. You also stated that you can see somewhat what they was wearing by hat or that's incorrect. I did not say that. So you were able to see the driver of the vehicle's entire head? I was able to see hair, which is what I have said previously. 
would it be fair to say that the alleged defendant that you just identified on the record for the court does not have here? You have shaved your head, yes. Would it be fair to say that you have not seen the alleged defendant shave his head? Objection. Relevance. Grounds. Overall, she may answer. I presume you mean the act of. The act of. I have not witnessed him actively shaving his head. So would it be fair to say that, to the best of your knowledge, you do not know, in fact, if the alleged defendant shaved his head? I am looking at the individual who was driving the SUV, and he now has a shaved head. That doesn't answer the question. It does. Next question. I would like to advise the court and the defendant that he's requested a subpoena for a person identified as Sammy Fleischman. We have learned that Ms. Fleischman has relocated to the state of Texas. Therefore, we will not be able to secure her appearance here at the trial on behalf of Mr. Brooks. If he wishes to make arrangements for transportation for Ms. Fleischman, he may do so himself. I wouldn't even begin to try to know how I can do something like that from a jail cell. I'm pretty much broke. Well, you're advised, though, if she's out of state, there's other procedures would have to be followed. And the state is not obligated to make those arrangements since it's an out-of-state witness at this point, okay? Did you hear me say that? I follow. All right, thank you. Anyone else in the subpoena list? I mean, there's others that we have objections to, but I don't know if you want to address that right now, Your Honor. Well, I'd like to have you put them on the record so that Mr. Brooks knows. And if he wants to respond now, that's fine. Otherwise, we can take it up a little bit later. The other two would be Erica Patterson and Detective Steve Guth, seeing as they have already testified and were subject to cross-examination. We would request an offer of proof as to what relevant testimony, if any, they may offer. And then there was one of the parents of the victims, Kathleen Urell. She was not present at the parade. And it's really unknown what type of testimony he would want to elicit from her. So we would be requesting an offer of proof to establish the relevancy of those witnesses, Your Honor. Do you want to address that now or have an opportunity to think about that and address it perhaps at the end of the day? Ms. Patterson and Detective Guth, I mean, as far as with them, I think it would be relevant because we have paperwork that was filed by the district attorney about there being no factual basis nor no domestic violence incident on November 20th, which they testified to. I think that that's perjury. So that should be... Well, you're giving me an argument, I guess, on the relevance of their testimony, sir. But as I recall the testimony, you were the one asking the questions about the 20th. The state dismissed that charge. I granted that request to dismiss it. There's nothing that you are bringing to my attention that would, that I can tell would be perjury. But I don't know if what you're trying to tell me is you'd like to question them about their credibility because that charge... Explain to me a little bit further. It would be a lot to do with credibility and also a few questions that I believe would still be relevant to even the events of the 21st. There's still some relevant things that I feel should be answered, that I feel the jury deserves to know. Well, I'm going to give him some leeway. He's a pro se defendant. What about this Kathleen Urell? I know she's on their potential witness list that was filed. I apologize for interrupting, but I did misspeak. She was at the parade, but she did not see... She cannot testify to anyone being struck or injured by the SUV other than her own children that she learned after the fact. And she cannot identify the driver. All right. Mr. Brooks? There's still relevancy there. She was at the parade, 
and as we just heard right now for the record that she would be directly affected by it by her family being victims in the, in the matter also she gave statements and she filed a report uh, i feel like her testimony would be relevant to the matter all right i'll keep her on the list as well all right anything else from the state no thank you mr brooks anything else from you yes <laughs> uh, at this point you probably i'm probably beating the dead horse but i just have to stay for the record anyway I would like to direct your honor to, um, I believe it's Milo versus United States, 505 F2D 1026. Are you familiar with that, your honor? Not off the top of my head, but I can pull it up. And also Hagens versus Levine, 415 US 533. Those cases are uh, being brought up because of the uh, continuing asking of me about the jurisdiction that I've been challenging. Anything specific you want to draw my attention to? Well, there's uh, cases that challenge the jurisdiction, which I've been uh, doing challenging the jurisdiction um, Milo versus United States states once jurisdiction is challenged the court cannot proceed when it is clear when it is clearly appears that the court lacks jurisdiction the court has no authority to reach merits but rather should dismiss the action um, what about the other I case? believe it's um, that states the the law requires proof of jurisdiction to appear on the record of the administrative agency in all administrative proceedings. We have yet to to prove the jurisdiction. It has yet to be proven. I filed a motion. Um, I've stated on the record numerous times. Um, I have yet to get an answer. And you're re specifically referring to the documents you filed on October 3rd? Um, I've been challenging jurisdiction since the beginning of trial. Probably as far back as when I became a, a pro per defendant myself. I'll take a look at these cases. I don't believe they're going to change my previous ruling uh, that the issues that you have raised are without merit uh, as previously ruled on, but I'll take a look. What kind of things are you responsible for as a battalion chief? Uh, as a battalion chief, I manage the day-to-day uh, -day operations of an entire shift of uh, firefighters, lieutenants, company officers, those kinds of things. You had upgraded the call to all five stations, right? That's correct. What happened next? We began to realize the scope of this was exceeding our uh, response capabilities. Um, and at that time, I upgraded uh, the alarm. This uh, box alarm brought in additional four ambulances an engine, a squad, and three chiefs, uh, in addition to all the other resources that were coming. And is that where the scope of the response stopped? Absolutely not. Do you recall what municipalities or, or other uh, partners that you work with were part of that response? I believe 23 units in totality. Uh, the Waukesha Christmas Parade, that's an annual event, is that right? That's correct. And have you been uh, the shift commander or battalion chief on duty for that event? before 2021? Yes. Um, overruled, he may answer. I believe he answered yes, his answer may stand. Okay. Your department uh, and the partners that responded in response to your box alarm procedure, you didn't transport every single victim or person who was struck in the parade incident, is that right? Objection irrelevant. Overruled. Uh, that is correct. We did not transport every person. We transported a total of 24 patients. Do you know how uh, any other people were transported away from the scene? I believe... Overruled, he may answer. I believe there were uh, approximately 49 additional patients transported. Good afternoon, Chief. Uh, did you ever receive any additional information about the... A uh, man with a knife in frame part? 
I re other than the radio uh, report or the traffic on the radio? Yeah, other than that. No, I did not. Um, do you recall making a report with Officer Wagner? I do not. I could be looking at the wrong thing prepared by my. Do you recall of uh, um, any law enforcement attempting to clear the transportation routes? Uh, at one point, I spoke with uh, Sergeant Tukarski and asked uh, him if he could assist me in opening up a route to get to the casualty collection point that we established. Do you recall any loss of power in the downtown area? Yes, uh, I believe 1740, so 540 p.m. sometime around then. Uh, the entire, uh, all the lights went out downtown. Uh, the downtown area lost power. Uh, do you recall receiving any information about what may have been the problem with, with the power? It was determined that uh, a power line had gone down due to the high winds that evening. So to the best of your knowledge, it wasn't uh, due to the, the incident that you were responding to? That is correct. I do not believe it was related. Did you receive any information about uh, why you needed to respond so quickly to the scene? I'm gonna have to ask you to clarify that. We were dispatched by our, uh, our dispatcher to respond to uh, uh, an incident and um, in, in my line of work, that usually means you respond very quickly. So it's really just get the call and go? That is correct. So to to your knowledge, you didn't yet have information about why you needed to respond, but you know it was something that needed to be responded to quickly. That is correct. We were initially dispatched to an unknown incident, and then it was clarified uh, in route, as I mentioned, when the, uh, uh, the alarm was upgraded, that it was a motor vehicle versus pedestrian incident. Motor, ve motor vehicle versus pedestrian incident. Um, have you ever responded to any uh, calls like that before? Yes, sir. Outside of the uh, parade uh, incident, to your knowledge, was there any more um, needed responses to any other incidents that may have been in the area? While we were on scene at the parade, uh, I believe that we uh, received two other calls for service uh, in the city. Um, to your knowledge, do you recall if they were directly related? I do not. Uh, no further questions. Uh, on cross-examination, there was reference made to a casualty collection point. Can you describe what that is? So a casualty collection point is uh, something that's established uh, when there's a mass casualty incident or a large number of casualties or people injured. Uh, the goal of it is to get people to a centralized point where they can be receive treatment and triage or determining the severity of their injuries uh, so that they can be transported directly from that area. That's not something that you would set up in a routine pedestrian versus motor vehicle incident. Is that correct? Um, overruled, he may answer. That is not something that we would normally uh, set up in a pedestrian versus motor vehicle accident. Can we put Exhibit 1 back up on the screen, please? Could you circle for us uh, on the screen in front of you where the casualty collection point was set up here? Objection, um, Overruled, he may answer. And aside from uh, ambulances, involved with your department and the other responding agencies, do you know how else victims are transported from the scene? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled, he may answer. It's not hearsay. Uh, numerous patients were transported up by law enforcement, uh, bystanders in the parade, and family members. On cross-examination, in reference to this being a motor vehicle versus pedestrian incident, uh, you were asked whether you'd ever responded to call like that before, and you said, yes, sir. Do you remember that testimony? Yes. 
So I'd ask a clarifying question. Have you ever been involved in or directed a response to a motor vehicle versus pedestrian incident of this magnitude before in your career? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. I have not. Do you recognize that video clip? Um, I've never seen this before, no. Okay. Does that uh, show, though, however, the, the van that was in front of you that you were marching with on the parade on November 21st of last year? Yes. Does this accurately reflect what you recall of this section of the parade, which it looks like it's at the beginning of the parade in terms of who you were with and what the float looked like? Yes. Okay. Um, I'd ask that the court um, admit this into evidence and display it, publish it to the jury. Okay. Um, witness just stated she doesn't recall the clip. The witness has uh, answered question, questions that establish the foundation for this. Can you pause it for a moment? Do you, do you see yourself in this, uh, this section that's been paused? Yes. So what do you remember about at some point were you struck? I just remember being um, struck by the vehicle from behind, like on my like my back, and then I like I fell to my knees and kind of like rolled under uh, the vehicle. Did you see any brake lights on the vehicle? Not that I can recall. Um, the objection is noted. It's overruled. And when it went past you, was it at a slow speed, a medium speed? How would you describe it for the jury? Hearsay. Overruled. Um, I mean, I, I would guess probably like maybe like 20 miles an hour. I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit 20. And I'm going to ask you, it'll just be in front of you initially. I'm going to show you a couple seconds of that. Can you describe for the jury what you just saw? Objection, hearsay. Um, overruled. Brown. Not hearsay. Um, it was, it was a video of the, the events that took place that day where I was struck by a vehicle. It'd be exhibit 20. Mr. Brooks, anything? Objection. Uh, the objection is noted. It's overruled. And let's take a look at the video. Thank you. Overruled. And did that accurately depict the car hitting you from behind and then rolling over your legs? Yes. You stated that um, when you were struck from behind, you didn't um, you didn't hear uh, or see the vehicle approach. Is that correct? That's correct. Did you estimate the speed, or do you do you recall how fast the vehicle may have been going? When it hit me, no, I was not able to see that. When it when it passed you, they had asked me when I when it passed me afterwards what I would estimate it to have been, and I said if I had to guess, it was probably around twenty miles an hour. Afterwards, <clears throat> would it be fair to say from the vi uh, the videos that we just saw? that the vehicle wasn't traveling fast? Your Honor, I'm just going to, for the record, Grounds. just clarify that the video was showing at 50% speed. Grounds, what? Um, I didn't know that initially, I guess. <laughs> Nobody knew that. Can you play it at full speed then, please? And then he can ask the question. Sir. Sir. And you said that you would estimate the vehicle was going around 20 miles per hour? Correct. And how would you come to that estimation? Based on previous experience with vehicles, traffic. So would it be, so would it be fair to say you, you don't know for sure how fast the vehicle was traveling? There's no way for me to say for sure how fast the vehicle was going. I was not driving it. 
you stated that you fell to the ground. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Did you at any point get a description of the driver of the vehicle? No. Were you able to make out if anyone was in the vehicle besides the driver? No. Did you get a license plate number? No. Did you file a claim in this matter? Uh, there was a police report filed, yes. Do you recall the date that you were interviewed or that you made the report? November 21st. Can you see this paper that I'm holding? Yeah. Is that your handwriting? If you can't see it that close, I, just say you can't. I can't read it from you. We have the document camera we can put up. Just be previewed for the witness. It does have personal identifying information on it. I will sum up object to that, Your Honor. This, this is a public trial. We have to remember that. Your objection is noted. Is that your handwriting on this uh, document? Yes. And you stated that you gave uh, a report to the FBI on November the 21st, is that correct? That is correct. Is it correct that this date here says 1229 of 21? That's not what this form is. What would this form be? Um, that was a form that was filled out as a follow-up based on my experience at the parade. I don't. I spoke with someone in person on the 21st. Would it be fair to say that reading from the report that you gave on November the 21st, <coughs> that it says that you saw a red SUV go to the left of the float and then to the right in front. I don't have the report, so. Would you like to see it? I have right here. Mr. Brooks, do you want to show her the report? Then you need to put it on the document camera. Your Honor, that is not the report. I believe that that may have been notes that were with the report that went to Mr. Brooks? That is not the report. Looks to be a summary of what she may have provided to another officer, FBI agent, but not the report itself. So in light of that, um, she's not gonna be questioned on that unless that, for, unless that helps refresh her recollection. I have the actual report too, if that may help. You Would it be fair to say that you testified that you don't recall hearing anything or seeing anything before you were struck, correct? Correct. When this is all, it's, it's finding like in the third person, I'm assuming, it says white, As she lay on the ground, White stated she observed the red SUV go to the left of the float and then to the right in front of the float. I observed the van go towards the left, the vehicle go towards the left of the van, at which point there was no, there was no indication that it was stopping or anything and that it continued from there. I could not see what happened beyond it going to the left of the van because the van was in front of me blocking my view. It also says 
White stated the vehicle appeared to be traveling extremely fast and it did not slow down or even brake. But you just said that you couldn't see the vehicle once it veered around the van. Is that fair to say? As it veered to the left of the van, it did appear to be moving fast, yes. Would it be fair to say that the video footage doesn't show that? Objection that mischaracterizes the video footage as Browns. the video was um, cut off um, shortly after striking Miss White. You're making an argument, which is something you can do later, so I'll sustain the objection as to the form of the question. It goes on to say, White did not observe the driver of the SUV and could only describe the SUV as red and it appeared to be a lower rise in quotation marks SUV and maybe a traverse. Do you recall saying that? I said it was a similar size to a traverse. Um, what is a traverse? Is irrelevant. Well, it's overruled. She may, she may answer and explain why she said what she did. Because, in my opinion, it's a lower sitting SUV or vehicle versus like some of the higher, some of them sit up higher and are bigger in size. There's more of a mid-size, lower to the ground SUV, in my opinion, similar to a Traverse. Do you recall saying that, and I'm reading from the report again, White stated that she was treated and released at Waukesha Memorial Hospital and sustained bruising, scars, and road rash on her body and a knee injury to her right leg. White stated that she did not have a broken leg, but may have a torn MCL. Do you recall reporting that? Yes. So would it be fair to say, and I'm asking this because you said may have a torn MCL. Would it be fair to say that at that time you were not sure of the full extent of your injury? Yes. And did you file a claim in this matter? Any, any type of claim? Yes. Um, what was that claim? There were claims that um, were filed with the state of Wisconsin that were to cover like the cost of the medical treatment that was received. So the state of Wisconsin offered to pay your medical expenses? It was through the Victim Witness Protection Program. So would you consider yourself a party to this matter then? Objection. Browns. Sustained, not relevant. <coughs> Excuse me. And in the claim that you filed, did you file a claim under a, uh, under an injured party? Objection. I, I guess I'm, I'm not understanding the um, question. It's vague. Grounds. She indicated she was filed a claim because she was injured. So, Mr. Mr. Brooks, I'm sustaining the objection as to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Do you consider yourself a, a, a injured party? Yes. Are you a plaintiff in this Objection. matter? Grounds? Um, she's a witness. Sustained. Have you read or seen the complaint in this matter in any, at any time? Objection is irrelevant. Grounds? Overruled. She may answer. I'm sorry, what was the question? Have you, have you seen or read the complaint? No, I, I don't know what complaint is being referred to, no. And were you aware that you may be called to testify in this matter? Yes. And who are you informed by? The victim witness program and the prosecutors. 
So are you saying the state of Wisconsin? Grounds. Grounds. Sustained. Mr. Brooks, under item 611, please move on to another line of questioning. And you stated that you didn't see any uh, brake lights? Correct. You were able to see that from the ground position? Correct. From your opinion, did it appear to you that the vehicle was attempting to strike anyone? Objection, calls for speculation. Grounds. The way he asked uh, from, the way he asked it, did it appear? If you know, you may answer. It appeared it was traveling in the direction where it could have struck other people, yes. Ma'am, after receiving medical attention at Waukesha Memorial Hospital, did you receive any other medical attention following November 21st, 2021? Objection, yes. irrelevant. Overruled, she may answer. And direct your attention back to the video. It was exhibit 20, the one that was the overhead video. Do you recall what, seeing that video today? Objection, she never answered the first question. She said yes. I didn't, I'm sorry, I apologize, I didn't, I didn't hear it. Thank you, ma'am, you may step down. What was your job title during the 2021-2022 academic year? I was the director of bands at Waukesha South High School. Can you tell us what happened while your band was marching between Barstow and approaching Gasper Street? At first I thought there was an emergency vehicle or something. I could tell there was some sort of a vehicle trying to get through. And then I started just seeing things flying in the air. And I realized this was not a vehicle waiting for people to move out of the way. I realized this vehicle was running over people. Um, the students around me, we all kind of dispersed at the same time. I thought in the initial moments that it was an accident, but then as I turned and the car went immediately past me and I could see that the driver was staring straight ahead and knew that, you know, could, could have clearly seen that they were running over people. Okay. Um, have you reviewed this video before your testimony today? Uh, yes, I have. Does it accurately depict what happened to your band in the yes, afternoon of the parade? You move exhibit 24 into evidence and ask to publish. Any position, Mr. Brooks? Objection. Um, if the witness has seen this video before, how, how would that corroborate with the testimony? Your objection is noted, it's overruled. <laughs> Pull it up again and set the speed to 50%. Objection, what is the relevancy of playing it at slower speed? Your objection is noted, it's overruled, permission granted. Does this video depict the same marching band in the same area of Main Street on November 21st? It does. Uh, I move exhibit 23 into evidence and ask to publish. Any position, Mr. Brooks? Objection. Do you see yourself on the screen? I do. So that's a touch screen in front of you. Would you mind drawing a circle around yourself? Okay. Thank you. All right. Move exhibit 22 into evidence and ask to publish. Mr. Brooks, any Objection. Position? Objection.
you eventually went back to school after that Sunday, the 21st, is that right? That is correct. And in the days that followed, kids yes. came back to school? They did, yes. And you had personal interaction with the members of your marching band? Yes, I did. We have objections on it, so we How many of those 10 members of your marching band were either struck or run over by the red SUV? They all were. We saw on the video what the lighting conditions were, but could you describe from your own memory what the lighting was like that day? It, Overruled. You may answer. Um, the lights were beginning, the sun was beginning to set. However, we were in an area where we were by lots of stores, so the sun was still out as well as the light coming from all the storefronts. Can we project on the screen for the witness only exhibit number 120? Do you see a, an image on the screen in front of you? Yes, I do. Is that image an accurate representation of what the driver of the SUV looked like that day when you saw him? Completely, yes. I'd move exhibit 120 into evidence and ask to publish. 120 is received. Permission to publish is granted. It may have been received earlier. He has already been received. I believe you testified a little bit earlier about the driver's demeanor as you observed him. Could you go into more detail about that? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. She may answer. So originally my perception just had been that I assumed there was an accident because I could not imagine anything else. But when the car went past me, I my perception changed of what was happening completely because the driver was looking straight ahead, making looked very attentive at that point. So the driver clearly was aware that he had hit and run over all of these people. It was not something that could have happened without the driver's awareness. We were also coming up on an intersection of a cross street. And although there was a crowd on the side, again, this is just my perception, but if the driver had been trying to escape the parade route so they were no longer hitting people, I felt like an instinct would have caused the head to turn to see if there was a way out on that side street. But the driver's head never turned looking for a way out of the parade route at that moment. And that's what caused my perception of what was going on that day to change. All right, of course, going to take a break before we do cross exam. All right, we are back on the record. Appearances are as they were before. We'll bring the jury out for cross. Go ahead. Can you address the subject matter jurisdiction, please? No, not right now. That is judicial determination, Your Honor. You mentioned earlier in testimony that um, that there was a side street where there could have been an exit out of the parade route Correct. provided. Is that fair to say? That is fair to say, yes. Do you recall if that uh, side street was barricaded in any way? I do not recall. From what you recall, can you estimate the speed of the vehicle that you saw that day? I'm not good at estimating speeds, but it felt fast as it went past me. It felt like it was accelerating. And you stated you was re relatively close to the vehicle when it passed you? Yes, I was. Uh, were you injured in any way? I was not. Fortunately, I had moved just in time. Were you able to get a license plate number of the vehicle? I was not. Did you notice any um, tinted windows to the vehicle? It's 11 months ago, but I believe there were in the back, but I don't want to say yes or no for sure on that. Did you see anyone else in the vehicle? I did not. Could you see the back seats of the vehicle? I did not look at the back seats. Could you see the passenger seat of the vehicle? I could. Do you call anyone being in the passenger seat? I did not see anyone in the passenger seat. From your opinion, you think you would have been able to hear a horn? I believe I would have. Even at the same time listening for the band notes, as you say, you have to give them feedback when you got back to school? Because that would have been an unexpected sound, so that would have been something that would have stood out in my memory. It would have been something that draws your attention. Exactly. So in your opinion, do you estimate it would have been hard, hard to hear any screaming or anything of that nature? 
Um, we started, as soon as the screaming started, we did hear that immediately. Because as soon as the screaming started, the students stopped playing, and so that, that one, loudness... One second. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Do you recall how long you had been uh, actively participating in the parade at the time of the incident? I marched in that parade in high school myself, so I, and I've attended on the years that I was not teaching, so it's probably my 40th time plus at that parade. I, I think you probably misunderstood. Okay. How, well, that's, that was still, I don't have to ask that question. <laughs> um, I was referring to how long you had been marching at, oh, that, at that time. We had been going for about four blocks. We were about at the halfway point of the parade route. Did you notice anything amiss up until that point? Up until that point, no. You stated uh, in your report that you were walking backwards facing the students? No, I was walking forward because the students near me were walking <clears throat> backwards. So I was the eyes in front for the students who were marching backwards. So is it possible that the, the report could have misquoted what you said? I have not seen the report. Um, the report that I have would be uh, page two. I don't have that in front of me. To your recollection, would you have left out any details in your report? No. Were you able to see any uh, license plate number on I the vehicle? I was not. Did Did you recall the news reporting um, how many people may have been hurt? Yes. From which you recall and observe, do you think that that it, those said news reports were accurate? It's objection. Grounds it's sustained. It's not relevant. You start hearing just some people yelling, stop that car, and the next thing you know, from my left, going down the road, um, you see a red SUV um, just go straight through uh, the parade. And where we were sitting at that time was the Waukesha South Band, um, and just drove right through Waukesha South Band, um, and just continued going. Did you see any people being struck by the SUV? Yes. Did you see any objects flying in the air? I didn't see any objects flying in the air. I saw the red SUV going over people. Okay, can you describe that for us, please? Yeah, so um, the band had just passed us, a uh, red SUV going, again, this is just an estimate, maybe 30, 40 miles an hour, um, just went straight over the Waukesha South Band, and it's not like it stopped. I mean, it, it went over. I saw the red SUV, it w looked like it went in the air, like over a pretty big object, and it just was like a big old speed bump and kept going. Okay. Um, you saw that from your position on the side of the road? Yes. Prior to the, um, to the SUV hitting the students in the band, did you hear the horn on the vehicle honking at all? I did not. You see the uh, video that's showing on your screen in front of you, sir? Yes. Is this a video that you've seen before? Yes, it is. And uh, do you believe this is a true and accurate representation of the events as you saw them on November 21 of 2021? Yes. Like to uh, admit number 25 and permission to play it for the jury? Objection is a, a hearsay. How, how is everybody seeing the videos before seeing them now? You can ask that on cross-exam, sir. I'd ask if you could point out for the jury the approximate area where you and your family were stationed? Somewhere over here. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play this with volume, please. So play that half speed.
you described on your direct testimony the um, seeing the car look like it was going over speed bumps. Is that right? Yes. Is that what's shown in uh, this exhibit number 25? Yes. In fact, it was going over people, not speed bumps. Correct, yes. Uh, do you recall being uh, interviewed by a detective Carpenter on November 24th of 2021? I do remember being inter interviewed by a, detec a detective, yes. Any idea why it took a few days for you to be interviewed? Uh, just the nature of the incident. Um, I'm sure they had a lot to get through. You did state that you didn't get a description of the driver, correct? Yes. Did you get a license place number? I did not. Do you recall if there was uh, any tent on the vehicle that you saw? Uh, not in the front, no. What do you mean by not in the front? Um, I did not see any tent on the front windows um, or the passenger side window. Um, from what I could remember, there was tint on the back windows. So it would be fair to say that you couldn't see into the back of the vehicle, correct? Correct. Do you recall how many occupants were in the vehicle? Yes. Even though you couldn't see the entire inside of the vehicle? Yes. At what point did you see the vehicle slow down? As it went over Waukesha South Band. And what did the vehicle do after that? It sped up. Do you recall describing the acceleration as rapid? Yes. Would you say that the video that we just saw depicts a rapid acceleration? Yes. Do you recall stating that it seems as if the driver of the vehicle was hitting the gas as hard as he could? Yes. And how would you be able to tell that? Um, the nature of a vehicle going over people. Um, you would think that the gas pedal would not be pushed as you're going over people. Um, and as the car continued, the red SUV continued over, went over the Walker South band and continued to accelerate. I could only imagine that the gas pedal was being pushed very hard after just going over people. So you were making an assumption, would that be fair to say? I wouldn't say it was an assumption, um, just from driving a vehicle, knowing what happens when you go over um, a large object, it typically slows the car down. And in order to speed it back up, the only thing that you can do is hit the gas pedal. You can hit the gas pedal, or would you hit the gas pedal as hard as you could? From what I remembered, it looked like the gas pedal was being hit hard. It, the, the, the vehicle accelerated very quickly. Would it be fair to say that you would have to be present in a vehicle to tell if the gas pedal was pushed hard, no. extremely hard as you say, no. or as hard as you could? No. You would be able to tell that from an outside observation? Yes. Did you observe uh, the, the route of the vehicle after what the video shows, you kind of go off the screen and did you observe where the vehicle went at that point? Yes. Did it continue straight or did it turn? Continue down the parade route. Do you recall seeing any brake lights? Uh, no. Even when it briefly slowed down? That would be correct. So would it be fair to say that in order to slow a vehicle down, you have to brake? Not necessarily. And what is the necessarily? Uh, hitting something or going over something naturally will slow a vehicle down. 
Um, can you pull up uh, Exhibit 25 again? Pause right there. From your uh, perspective, is the sound that you, that you just heard, could that have been a horn? Could we replay it? Are you able to answer just based on what you heard? No. You did state that you didn't hear any horn, correct? Correct. It would be fair to say that it was pretty loud at that point in the parade, correct? Yeah. Do you think the the noise would have impaired your hearing in any way at that at that point in time? No. Is it possible that a horn could have been beat that you didn't hear? No, horns are pretty loud. It would have been heard. Even over all the noise of the parade and the band and the people and the, you would have been able to clearly hear? Yes. Do you recall what you saw the driver doing at the time that it passed the area that you were seated at? Uh, driving the car. The Did you observe any other actions by the driver? No. Just focused on the road that was up ahead of them. And there's nothing about the description that stood out to you or caught your eye that maybe you could recall? In regards to what? The description of the driver. Um, I, I could tell there was one person in the car. Um, that I mean, I could see it. They were wearing some sort of hat or sweatshirt. That was about it. And after uh, the, the vehicle passed where you were seated at, and how, about how long did you stay at the parade after what you saw? I wouldn't be able to remember that. Did you attempt to help anyone injured or check for your family here? Uh, at that point, when I started running back, um, there were a lot of bodies on the ground. Um, and, and from the looks of it, um, there was the right people helping them. So my next reaction was get back to my family. So with all the people uh, that appeared to be injured, you didn't stop to render any aid to any one of them? Objection, argumentative, Your Honor. Grounds. Sustained. Sustained. Next question, please. Do you see any news reports about the incident once you got your family home? Uh, we don't really watch news to begin with, but uh, this just kind of made that a little bit more that we didn't turn the TV on, so we, we did not watch much news. And you yourself didn't file a claim in this matter, did you? Objection, relevance. Grounds. If you can be a little more specific, if you mean a claim related to any uh, related to the parade. Did you make a, a, a claim of being an injured party or did anybody in your family make a claim of being an injured party? No. Whom were you contacted by about being a witness in this matter? Uh, I wouldn't know the Waukesha district attorney. Let, let the record reflect that the witness made a hand gesture towards the prosecution table. Yes. The record will so reflect. Thank you. It would be fair to say that you were contacted about testifying in this matter directly from the Waukesha district attorney's office? Yes. Do you know who the plaintiff is in this matter? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds? Not relevant, sustained. Next question. Are you aware of any injured party or plaintiff in this matter? I am not. You are not? That's correct.
Have you read or seen it, any complaint besides your own in this matter? <laughs> You mean a statement, or do you mean a criminal complaint? Uh, a complaint, any complaint. On the object of vagueness and relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Have you seen any other statements by any parties other than yourself in relation to this incident? No. Are you the only person present from your family that uh, made a statement or a report? Objection relevance. Browns. His family was there. Overall, he may answer if anyone else in his family provided a statement. No, I did not. You stated earlier that it was difficult. Well, you stated that you don't really watch the news to begin with, but it, the incident made it more difficult to do that, correct? A little bit, yes. Uh, would, would that be said of your family as well? Uh, yes. So there was some type of impact? In regards to what? In, in regards to being present at the parade? Yes, there, there was a, a huge emotional impact on our family. Do you know of any reason why no one besides yourself made a report? Objection, Grounds? Irrelevant. Sustained. Next question. So as far as you know, you've, you've never seen or interacted with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Under 906.11, new topic please. One not already covered. Where, from where you were seated, were you seated to where there were people in front, standing in front of where you were seated? Yes, my family. It would be fair to say from the video that there were quite a few people standing in the general area where you were seated at. Would that be fair to say? Uh, yes, most of the people in front of me were kids, so they were littler than me. Did you observe any one of those kids being struck no. So it would be fair to say that the vehicle did not strike anybody that was seated on the curb right there where you were at? Specifically right where I was at, no. After observing people struck, in your opinion, how did the vehicle miss the people that were seated directly in front of you? Objection beyond the grounds. Scope beyond the scope grounds. of knowledge and irrelevant. Grounds. Mr. Brooks, let her state her objection without interruption. The objection is sustained. Next question. So would it be fair to say that the only people you observed being struck was the Waukesha South Bend? Yes. Approximately how many people would you say by estimate? Waukesha South Band is a pretty large band um, and the red SUV went right through it. If I had to estimate 10, maybe 15, I wouldn't know the exact number that were struck by the SUV. Would it be fair to say that that, that number is fairly low to all the people that was in the area at the time? Objection. Argumentative, Your Honor. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question, Mr. Brooks. <coughs> next question. Would it, next question or rephrase? No, well, I, sus I sustained it. You can ask your next question. Would you identify yourself as a, a, a injured party in this matter? Objection, ask and answer. Grounds. Sustained. <coughs> Would you identify as an injured party in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Asked and answered. We do need a brief uh, discussion outside the presence of the jury before our next witness, Your Honor. Okay, very well. I'll excuse the jury. I'll rise for the jury.
The next we, uh, witness is Thomas Green. This is the witness that we previously raised the issue about having a, one prior criminal conviction. It's from 2005 for the misdemeanor offense of criminal trespass. The offense date is from 17 years ago. The witness was 21 years old at that time. He's now 38, has no other intervening criminal convictions, uh, was not originally a crime of deception. I believe that it's not relevant uh, for purposes of impeachment. I'd ask the court to exclude that conviction from this witness's testimony. The main thing is um, this issue wasn't really discussed to this length until it was time for this witness to be called to the stand. Um, well, that's what I said I would take it up, is prior to that witness's testimony. I even gave you the statute that is at issue, and it's 906.09, impeachment by evidence of conviction of crime or adjudication of delinquency. Here's, here's pull why. the statute book out, and it's in there. If you want to review it quickly, I'll give you an opportunity. But I do need to address this, and now is the proper time. 906.09. All right, go ahead, Mr. Brooks. What's your I'm, argument? I'm, I'm, I'm still. I wanted to make sure I heard what you said, so I stopped reading briefly. I guess I would, from what I've read so far, I would go to um, 906.09 uh, sub 2. It would be, it would be kind of problematic. And I say that because if I was going to take the stand, my record would be brought up. And some things on my record was done 20 something years ago, but it would still have bearing. So I believe that the, it should be, it should be fair. It should be the same. So again, looking at the factors uh, under 90609 sub two, uh, just about every factor weighs in favor of not uh, informing the jury of this conviction. We've got uh, a conviction date of April 4th of 2006. And there's no uh, re-offending uh, evidence or any new cases or any new uh, convictions. So that, again, that fit factor weighs in favor of not including this. Gravity of the crime, this is an entry into a locked building or construction site. So it's a misdemeanor offense. Uh, so that weighs in favor of not including it. It does not, on its face, involve any dishonesty or false statements by the witness. Uh, frequency of the conviction, again, it's just the one. And in terms of any other relevant factors, as an offer of proof, I'll inform the court that this witness is going to testify about his and his family's presence uh, near the Martha Merrill bookstore um, on the day of the parade, the positioning of his children, and what he remembers in terms of the SUV uh, driving along the parade route and clipping his two children who were seated on the curb of the, watching the parade. Entering into uh, entering into anything with is deceptive in nature. Just right off the bat, that's deceptive in nature. Why would you enter into something that you're obviously not supposed to be into? You entered into something because you were not supposed to be in there. That's deceptive in nature. Even though there are some factors that I could say would warrant exclusion, I think it's best to um, err on the side of caution, as we sometimes say, and allow the witness to be questioned about this prior conviction under the statute. And that is the very limited inquiry of uh, have you been convicted of a crime? The answer should be yes. And then how many times? One. And that's it. I heard a loud crash noise to my right, and I looked that way, 
and then I seen a car uh, running over the marching band and um, as soon as the car had ran over the marching band it swerved towards me and my family and then um, just proceeded on down the parade route. Down Main Street? Yep. Okay. Can you describe for us how uh, you, your wife, and your children were positioned? Where were your kids in relation to you? Um, in front of me. How many kids do you have? Three. And which of the three kids were in front of you? Uh, Charlie and Lily were in front of me sitting on a bench. How old was Charlie uh, back in November of 2021? Objection, irrelevant. Overruled. Nine. And what about Lily? How old was she back then? Objection, irrelevant. Overruled. Eleven. What happened as the uh, vehicle that you described approached your family? Uh, it swerved towards us. Can you describe the direction of travel when you say swerve? Like cardinal direction? Or even left and right, however you can describe it. Um, I mean, we were in the Overruled, the, he may answer the question. Uh, we were facing the parade route and it swerved towards us. I'm just gonna play a few seconds for you um, to see if you can identify what's happening in the video, okay? So we'll, uh, let's turn this, make sure the sound's off. It is, all right, let's play from 11 seconds. What does it show? Uh, it shows where the SUV had ran over the band where I had first heard it coming, and then it's swerving towards my family. Pause. We paused at 21 seconds. Uh, can you circle for us the area where you and your family were at this moment in time? Objection. I thought it was being played till 19 seconds. Oh, your objection is noted. It's overruled. What does it show? Uh, Looks like the SUV right after it ran into my kids. Move exhibit, excuse me, is that video an accurate depiction of how you saw the events unfold that afternoon? Yes. I move exhibit 27 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection, it's hearsay. Do you know whether your two kids were struck by the vehicle? Yes, they were. Okay, and that's consistent with where they were sitting along the curb? Yes. I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Brooks. Um, you stated that on the videos you just saw were uh, accurate depictions of what you observed that day, correct? Yes. Have you seen any of these videos before today? No. So today is your first time seeing any of this footage? Yes. Mr. Green, have you ever been convicted of a crime? Yes. Do you remember what you did when the vehicle passed you? Yes. Can you state for the record what you did immediately following the, uh, the vehicle passing you? I ran to see if my kids were okay. <laughs> Do you recall getting a look at the driver of the vehicle? Yes, I do. And what did you see? I seen somebody in a hoodie with dark skin. Uh, did you observe anyone else in the vehicle? No, I did not. Could you see the entire vehicle? Passenger seat and back seats? I don't recall seeing anybody in the back seats. Um, the windows were tinted. So it would be fair to say if there was somebody seated in the back, you wouldn't have seen them? I couldn't say. Did you get a license plate number in the vehicle? No, I did not. So earlier you said that you heard uh, a crash to your right which alerted you to the vehicle approaching. Is that fair to say? Yes. 
Do you know what that crash was? The vehicle hitting the band. Do you recall the vehicle uh, swerving? Yes, I do. Do you remember what direction the vehicle swerved in? To the left, towards me and my family. And did it swerve away from your family at that point? After it hit my family, yes. Do you recall the maker model of the SUV? No, I do not. Do you recall the license plate number of the SUV? No, I do not. Do you remember stating that when you saw the SUV coming, you froze? Yes. And do you remember saying that you stared directly at it as it was driving towards you? Yes. And you didn't get an accurate description of the driver? Uh, I had already stated that I seen a tan-skinned person with a hood on. You said dark skin. Objection. That's not a question and argumentative. Oh, is there Brown. a question, Mr. Brooks? You can't testify, but you can question him. So your last statement, I'll strike. <clears throat> Ask your question. Did you not state earlier that you saw a dark skin driver? Yes. And did you now just state that you saw a tan skin driver? Um, they both seem the same to me. So from your perspective, dark skin and tan skin is the same? Objection. Grounds. Argumentative. Next question. You can rephrase. What would you consider to be dark skin? Objection. Grounds. Overruled. <coughs> you may answer. It's hard to say. What would you consider to be tan skin? Darker than Caucasian, I guess. Would Would it be fair to say that uh, there there is different types of shades of color to people? Would that be fair to say? Yes. He answered the question. His answer may stand. Do you recall hearing gunshots? No. Any idea why that would be in the report? Objection. Max Grounds. Foundation. Um, sustained as to the form of the question, Max Foundation. Do you recall stating that, well, let me read from the report. Thomas stated they heard gunshots and he picked up Charles and they ran back to their vehicle. Do you recall making that statement? I recall an officer coming down the street yelling gunshots fired. Any idea why you would be mistaken in your report that you heard the gunshots? Objection mischaracterizes Grounds. the um, Sustained lack of foundation as to the form of the question. I'm reading directly from the report now. Directly from the report. That's not the issue, Mr. Brooks. The issue is, is, is it his statement or a summary of his statement? Because that makes a difference to the foundation you have to lay. Um, it does not say summary. Um, if it's a witness statement, typically there's something either signed, sometimes police officers summarize what witnesses <coughs> say to them. So that's what I'm referring to as a summary. And if it's in a summary, typically if it's a direct attribution to a witness, it's in quotes. So with that, ask your question. This is not in quotes, so I'm, but I'm going to assume this is summary. Do you remember stating in your summary report that you heard gunshots? No. Do you recall if uh, the injuries suffered by your family were broken bones? They were not. And who is Nicole? My wife. Do you recall 
Nicole making uh, any statements to law enforcement? She made she made one, yes. Do you recall Nicole stating that she heard gunshots? No, I do not. Well, an objection it calls for hearsay. It's sustained. Uh, any answer that he gave us struck. Jury shall disregard it. Your Honor, I'm also reading this from the summary. Question him about what he knows, not what other people said to him. No, the question was, did he know? Did, do you recall her saying that she heard gunshots? You're asking him to confirm hearsay, so it's sustained. Is it fair to say that right after that you ran straight to your vehicle? Right after what? Right after the incident. There was a slight delay. And what was that delay? <clears throat> Seeing if our kids were okay. And then from that, straight to the vehicle. After the officer came running down the street saying shots fired, we picked up our kids and ran. So would it be fair to say that you weren't initially inclined to leave because of the incident, but because of the shots fired? Objection. Grounds. Overruled. He may answer. And then move on. And I don't really understand what you're asking. What prompted you to leave? When the officer said shots fired. So the incident that happened didn't prompt you to leave? No. Grounds. <clears throat> Overruled, he may he may answer if he understands the question. We did not want to leave right away because my son said he couldn't feel his legs and there was a woman there helping us that said he might have a back injury that we should not move him. Um, to your recollection, was that woman a, a, a nurse or a medical <laughs> professional? I don't know. Would it be fair to say that she was making an assumption? I don't know. Do you recall the woman's name? No, I don't. Do you recall if she was a spectator or someone uh, marching or, or... I don't know. Do you recall uh, the description of the woman that told you not to move your child? I'll check. Relevance. Grounds. Overruled. You may answer. Caucasian. Blonde hair. So it'd be fair to say she seemed pretty concerned. Very concerned. So why would you not immediately leave at that point? Because I didn't know if he had a back injury or what the extent of his injuries were. And if it was a spinal injury, I didn't want to pick him up. Did you try to make a call for medical attention at that point? I did not. <clears throat> and what prompt you not to seek medical attention if you had a assumption that the injuries could be severe? This all happened within about a two second time frame. So it would be it would be fair to say that you were pretty much like just frozen. You didn't you didn't know what to do and how to go about doing it. Yes. Do you recall your wife uh trying to call for medical attention? No. Did you see any other children struck by the vehicle? Uh, the band. Any My other children? Small children? Small children. No, I do not. But you do recall small children being present, correct? Yes. You testified on cross-examination that you initially thought the vehicle was part of the parade and that it was an accident. Do you recall giving that testimony? Yes. Did you continue to think that it was an accident? Objection. 
you're saying. No, so, I could. Hold on. Overruled, he may answer. Once the vehicle kept going after hitting the band, I realized that it was not a part of the parade. You recall testifying on cross-examination that you don't recall the make and model or license plate number of the SUV? Remember saying yes. that? How many uh, SUVs or vehicles in general did you see striking people at during the parade route? Objection, irrelevant. Overrule. Just the one. All right, anything else from the state? No, thank you, Judge. Mr. Brooks? Um, just so I'm clear, the, on these subpoenas where it says, you are further required to bring with you the following. Do I leave that blank or what, what should I put there? Just so I'm clear. I can't give you advice on that. I only wanted you to understand that witnesses would not generally have their police reports or statements made. Those are usually kept by the police department. And so you would need to subpoena the custodian of the police records. Would it be sufficient to just put you can leave it blank also, correct, Your Honor? Yeah, you don't have to fill it in. It can be left blank if I'm not answering that correct. Or the, I don't want you to think you have to put something there. Yeah, only, that's, that, that was my impression. You know, usually when you're... Got it. It's, it's the same thing with a job application. You're not supposed to leave nothing blank. Okay, let me answer it this way because <laughs> I was not tracking with that one. Um, <laughs> you only fill that out if there's something specific as it relates to this case that you want them to bring. Anything else from you then tonight, Mr. Brooks? Uh, that would be it. All right. Thank you, everyone. We are in recess.